So, stupid Amazon sent me the wrong processor. I ordered the Ryzen 5 5500 for a budget gaming build that I had planned, but uh, Amazon went and screwed that all up. They sent me this instead, the Ryzen 5 5600 GT. <sighs> so you might be thinking, well, Johnny, that's a more expensive processor than the one you ordered. Didn't you make out? Well, maybe, possibly. So I have some questions. Why does this chip exist? What is this chip for? And should you buy this CPU? So in today's video, we'll be answering these questions and having some fun upgrading along the way. So stay with me. So why does this chip exist? Well, to understand that, we need to take a look at four unique chips that are in this hierarchy. So what we have is the Ryzen 5 5500 released back in April of 2022. You also have the Ryzen 5 5600G released in April of 2021. Now recently, back in January of 2024, AMD released the Ryzen 5 5500 GT and the Ryzen 5 5600 GT, which is what we're looking at here today. So, I believe that the Ryzen 5 5600 GT is going to replace the Ryzen 5 5600 G. I think they're coming to the end of their inventory and they're going to replace a couple of chips. And it makes sense. It's a popular platform. Uh, a lot of people are on that platform. They're still supporting that platform. So that makes sense if they're just going to replace it out. Now, the next question is, what's different about these two chips? the G versus the GT. Well, we compared the two. They both got six cores and 12 threads. They both had the same amount of L2 and L3 cache. They both, ha both have a total TDP of 65 watts. They're both unlocked for overclocking. They both only run PCI Express 3.0. And they both have Radeon Vega 7 graphics. Now, what's different from the GT versus the G? Well, the GT was released in January of 2024, relatively new, and the G was released back in April of 2021. Now, the Ryzen 5 5600 GT has a base clock of 3.6, whereas the Ryzen 5 5600 G has a base clock of 3.9. So the base clock's a little higher on the G series. But here's where it gets interesting. The boost clock on the GT is 4.6, but the boost clock on the Ryzen 5 5600G is 4.4. So you get a 0.2 gigahertz boost, which should translate into better performance. Now the cost for the GT is $140 US, whereas the G model is at $126 US. So there's the differences. Very close to being the same, but with some minor differences in the clock speeds. What is this chip for? Hmm. Well, if you're building strictly a gaming PC with a dedicated graphics card, you typically wouldn't buy a CPU with integrated graphics. So you probably wouldn't purchase this chip. You would go for something like the Ryzen 5 5500 or the Ryzen 5 5600. Now, if you're building a workstation, uh, this could be the ideal chip for you. I mean, you're going to be doing emails, Excel, Word, Teams meetings, YouTube, all that wonderful stuff that you can do with a regular PC. You know, this, this will definitely do the job. But there's another school of thought. If you only do some light gaming, integrated graphics may get you by in the meantime until you can upgrade your PC with a good graphics card. So, on that school of thought, let's take a look at these integrated graphics. Let's see if you can actually game on them, what kind of performance it is, and if you actually should buy this chip. We can finally answer that last question. So, stay with me. So, here we are in Counter-Strike. We're on low settings, 1080p. And, uh, yeah, I, I gotta say it's not the sharpest image. But, here we are starting off and around 100 FPS and the color is looking a little off um, we'll, we'll wait and see here as we go through so I don't know if it's coming through on the video but it's a 
bit on the grainy side. It's not very sharp. Um, but we are over 100 FPS, so, uh, you know, it feels good. It's playable, um, but I wouldn't call this the best experience. It's actually uh, messing with my eyes a little bit. Um, you know, making me a little bit uh, dizzy, if you will. But, you know, playable, I guess. So, here we are in Apex Legends. We have everything set to low. We're setting a target of 100 FPS at uh, 1080p. So, let's see what we get here. So, we're up around and between 70, 80 FPS in the middle of the map. It's definitely playable. Still looking a little bit grainy. Um, it's still messing up my eyes a little bit, but definitely more playable than uh, Counter-Strike. All right, so here we are in Forza Horizon 5. We got uh, set at 1080p. We got it on low preset and fidelity FX set to balanced. So, here we are, running about 70 FPS. Now, I gotta say again, it's, it's a little grainy and, and a little blurry, but it is responsive. Um, it's definitely playable. Um, but again, it's having a bit of an effect on my eyes. So, uh, me personally, I, I don't think I could sit in front of this and play this for an hour or two. Uh, I think I'd wind up with a headache, but let's see if we can clean up that picture. Let's go back in the settings. Let's put on uh, TAA. This might sharpen up those edges and maybe take some of the blurry blurriness away. So let's see what happens. All right, now that's looking a little clearer, a little crisper. Not such a strain on the eyes. That's still a little grainy, but better. Um, I probably could play this for a while now. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So yeah, you know, considering it's an APU, the fact that we can even play it, that's, that's a good thing. Should you buy this APU? Well, I've got to be honest. If you're building a gaming PC, absolutely not. There is no reason to buy this APU if you're going to put in a dedicated graphics card. And that applies to gaming PCs, by the way. There's always exception to the rules. But I think you'd be extremely disappointed if you tried to game on this APU consistently I like it really messed with my eyes it's giving me headaches and I, I know there's people out there that do builds with these and say it's a good option but for me personally you're wasting your money I think it's a waste of $50 you could save that $50 and put it towards a GPU like the one I'm about to install on this computer now here we have the RX 5600 XT it's a 6 gigabyte card and the, the performance is like night and day as you're about to see. So let's throw this in the PC and I'll show you what I mean. So here we are on Forza Horizon 5. We're on the GPU, the RX 5600 XT Challenger Edition. We are on high presets, no upscaling. And we're in live play, zooming around the map between 130, 160 FPS. Very smooth, color accurate. I mean, excellent gameplay, really responsive. It's a major difference going from an APU to a GPU. Uh, that's like, don't waste your time with the APU for gaming. Okay, so here we are in Apex Legends. Again, we're on the GPU, the RX 5600 XT. And as we dive into the range, we're at 168 FPS, 188 FPS, 220. So, a major difference already. We could barely break 80 on the APU. It was grainy. Here, it's looking pretty smooth, color accurate, not blurry. Uh, a much better gaming experience. Um, a major difference here. Final thoughts. 
Well, I think it's great that AMD is still supporting the M4 platform and releasing new chips. When it comes to gaming, I do not recommend the APU just strictly for gaming. While it does have its place for workstations and other applications, if you're building a gaming G PC, get a graphics card. Now, if you get value out of this video, hit that thumbs up. And why not subscribe so you get notified when I create cool content. And if you're interested in building a PC for under $500, check out the video in the top right hand corner. And with that said, you all have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye now.